Hi, and thanks for stopping by Next Level Carpentry. In this video, I want to show you how I make what I call super shims. They're just tapered strips of wood that I cut to custom length and thickness for special shimming purposes. I don't use them often, but sometimes they're the best fix for certain applications on remodeling projects. To give you an idea what's possible with this method, I'll make a pair of identical shims that go from nothing to 15 30 seconds in 4 feet 1, and then I'll make another one that goes from zilch to 15 16 over 12 feet. So if you want to learn how to make super shims to get you out of a bind on a remodeling project, stick around and I'll show you how. Making super shims is actually a pretty straightforward process, but you do need a few things to get it done. The first thing you need is an accurate measurement of length and thickness for the shim. I'm going to use this 2x4 as an example of, say, a floor joist that's out of level and needs to be shimmed level before plywood's put down. A great way to get a measurement like that is using a level with a how far out gauge attached. At the end of this video, there's a link to another video I did where I review a how far out gauge and show a little bit about using it. But basically, with the gauge attached to a level, I can set it on a surface that's out of level and then turn the knob on the gauge until the bubble's in the middle so I know how much slope is in the joist over a given length. It's a four foot level and with the gauge added, I'm totaling four foot one in length and I'm reading 15, 30 seconds on the gauge. Once I've determined the length and the slope for the super shim, I just need a straight board to cut it from. And on a job site, a straight board isn't always available. So there will be a link to another video at the end of this one that shows how to cut a straight edge on a crooked board. And I use that method to straighten the pieces I'll use in these examples for cutting these super shims. In the video where I show how to cut a straight edge on a bowed board, I go through the steps I use to create this straight edge fixture, which I use to carry the straight board through a table saw to cut the super shim. Because I want to show how this process can be done on a job site, I'm going to put aside my cabinet saw and bring in my DeWalt portable saw to show that this is possible even on portable job site equipment. And just like in the other video, I'll set up a roller stand to catch the work as it comes off the table saw. Using the process I show in the video about cutting a straight edge on a bowed board, I make a straight edge with a sturdy push fence on it and add a couple of hold down blocks. And then I cut two straight edges on a 2x4. If the 2x4 is already straight, great. If it's got a bow in it, I use that process to make sure that I've got two straight edges. Everything up to this point is the same between cutting a straight edge on a crooked board and cutting a super shim. But this next step is where the process changes. The next step is to drive a flathead screw into this solid wood block near the push fence. And I like to start that screw and drive it in with a cordless screwdriver. But it could be a lot easier to use an old-fashioned cordless screwdriver to set that screw head to an accurate measurement. In this case, the shim is going to be 15 30 seconds inch thick at the fat end, and so the head of the screw needs to stick out past that straight edge, 15 30 seconds of an inch. I'm using a tape measure in this example, but if more precision is required, you can always use a fractional caliper, and I'm satisfied with that either way. With the flathead screw in place and the fixture all set up, the next step is to Cut your straight 2x4 to the length of the shim. In this case, it's 4 foot 1. And next, I just set the straight 2x4 that's cut the length up against the flathead screw on one end. and tight against the straight edge on the other end. So that it's held firmly in place 
at the right angle for cutting the shim. With these hold downs, it's possible to cut a number of shims out of the same piece. But as the piece gets thinner or the shim is longer, it's important to make sure that this piece isn't flexible enough to bow in the middle because that'll throw off the accuracy of the shim. In a pinch, a person could add another stop screw or two in here at the right distance to hold that edge straight as the cut's being made if the board wants to flex during the cut. After getting this fixture all set up, the next step is to measure the combined width of the board and the straight edge at the narrow end of the taper. And in this case, I'm reading 7 and 13 16 inches. So I'll raise the blade so the teeth are about an eighth inch above the 2x4, and then set the fence to 7 and 13 16 inches to the far side of the blade. That's important that you measure to the far side of the blade, not between the fence and the blade. Once the fixture is set up, the rip fence is set, and the outfeed roller and or your helper are in the correct position, it's time to get down to business and cut a super shim. Because of the very narrow taper of this piece, I could have set the fence over another ten thousandths of an inch to keep the shim length at exactly four foot one. But as it was, the cut ate up that first few inches of the shim, but it still gets the job done. Once one shim has been cut off the straight two by four, all it takes to make an identical shim is to unscrew the blank from the cutting fixture. Set it aside and then reset the fence to the narrow end of the blank with the cut edge of the 2x4 flush with the outside of the blade. And the position I set the fence at this point will determine if the thin edge of this super shim gets cut away or if it stays intact. I'm going to leave it just a little bit proud to show the difference. So I'll reposition the outfeed roller and use a push stick for this operation. And with that cut, we have two shims that are virtually identical, going from nothing to 15 30 seconds over four foot one. As I cut the shims off this straight and two by four, it also changed the equilibrium of tension in that wood so that this board developed a bow in it again. If I was cutting more shims off this, I'd need to straighten it again to make sure those shims stay consistent. As it is, that bit of a bow in the blank made the one shim slightly thinner in the middle than the other. The ends are the same, but the middle is a bit different because the board bowed. That's a little embarrassing, but it's also a factor in cutting these shims. The longer they are, the more accurate they need to be, the more you need to pay attention to all the little details so that they come out the way you want them. Next, as promised, I'll make a shim that goes from zilch to 15 sixteenths over 12 feet using the same process with a little bit of a twist. And I'll start with this ragged 2x4 that's not good for much else and make shims out of it so that it doesn't go to waste. First I'll cut our candidate here to 6 feet in length. And then I'll remove the taper screw and reposition one of the hold down blocks to accommodate the longer workpiece. Making sure to put the bowed side of the board away from the straight edge. And this is a pretty beat up 2 by 4 so I'm going to take a little more off of it with a cut at 7 and 3 quarters. This cut will give a straight edge on the 2 by 4 Next, I remove the straight edge and set it aside and reset the fence to cut a parallel edge on the 2x4. And those two cuts give me a 2x4 blank that's straight on both sides and is 6 feet long. 
to make this extended super shim with a taper from nothing to 15 16 and 12 feet i'll make the same taper from 15 30 seconds to nothing in six feet half the length half the thickness by putting the flathead screw back in the same hole at the same depth as the other example and then i attach the six foot two by four blank to the fixture with this end resting on the head of that flathead screw and then measure the combined width of the straight edge and the workpiece again. And I'm going to go seven and a half inches to the far side of the blade. With everything in position, time to make the cut. And that piece is six feet long, goes from nothing to 1530 seconds. With a little bit of play in the system, this is actually a little thicker than 1530 seconds. But in framing situations, that's generally plenty good enough. And this next step is the trick that makes it possible to create these super long shims with a great degree of accuracy while avoiding the difficulty of trying to manage a 12 foot two by four blank. So what I do next is to remove the blank from the straight edge fixture and set the fixture aside. And now to complete the process, I mark the thick end of the first cutoff onto the thin end of the blank. And then set the rip fence to that pencil mark so that the pencil mark is on the far side of the blade once again. And because the taper of the shim is built into the blank, I just make a parallel cut at that setting. And a close-up of this piece after the cut shows that it's exactly one inch instead of the 15 16 that I was shooting for. That tells me my taper is off by a 32nd of an inch once at the middle mark and once at the end. If a greater level of accuracy was needed for a particular shim, I can spend more time with the setup and preparation and dial that down. But like I said earlier, for most framing applications, this level of accuracy is plenty good. And as you can see, I've now got a shim that's for all intents and purposes, goes from nothing to an inch or 15 16 over 12 feet. Well, I guess that's pretty much a wrap. And I hope you find the method that I've shown here for cutting these super shims interesting, if not helpful. Because as far as I know, Next Level Carpentry is the only place on YouTube that shows how to get this done. As I said at the beginning, I'll put links over here at the end of this video, one that shows a review and setup of the How Far Out gauge, and the other one that covers making the straight edge fixture for cutting a straight edge on a bowed board. So that the three of the videos combined show you the process that I take with me on every re and the three of the videos and the information in all three videos are something that I take with me on every remodeling project I go on and use this method applied to various applications for getting better results when working with less than ideal job site conditions. And the information in all three videos are something that I take with me on every remodeling project I go on and use this method applied to various applications for getting better results when working with less than ideal job site conditions. So it's time for me to get cleaned up and go have dinner. I appreciate the time you spent watching the video. Hit the thumbs up button if you like what you saw consider subscribing if you haven't. Viewer participation and comments are what bring momentum to the channel and help it grow. And with that growth, I'll continue to work to improve the quality of the videos and provide more of this sort of in-depth insight into next level carpentry. I'm gonna to try to get another video cranked out before the end of the year, but people are busy. So if you're not able to come back until next year, happy new year and thanks for watching.